Anytime there's a problem in the body, it's important to understand what's causing the problem. Then we can seek the solution. There are several different causes for hip and back pain, but the most probable cause is muscle imbalance from front to back, side to side, and in rotation. The simplest explanation is using the analogy of the gas pedal and brake pedal in your car. There are muscles in the body whose primary job is to start an action. We call those the accelerators. It may be a fast action like running or a slow action like walking, but the point is they start the action. So we will call these muscles the accelerators, just like the accelerator pedal in your car. Directly opposite these accelerator muscles are the muscles that help stop the action. So we call these the brake muscles. Again, just like your car's brake pedal. The purpose of accelerators is to create movement and the purpose of the brake is for protection of the body. Most importantly, to protect the spine and the joints. The accelerators are usually very strong and shortened. Examples of accelerator would be the calves, the quads, the pectorals, or the pecs, the muscles that rotate the hip outward and the muscles that turn the trunk to the opposite side. The brake muscles are usually weak and overly long. Good examples of brake muscles are the hamstrings, the inner core muscles, the upper back muscles, and the muscles that rotate the hip inward. So to make the point, the accelerators are usually too strong and short, and the brake muscles are usually too weak and long. Let's look at a couple of important examples. When we bend over at the waist, the muscles that bend the hips forward become short. Because they do that a lot as part of our normal day in, al in almost every exercise and action, they become shorter and stronger than their opposite muscles. We call these muscles the hip flexors, and they are fundamentally accelerated. When the hip flexors are working to bend us forward, their opposite muscles, the hamstrings and back muscles, are fighting to support most of the weight of your upper body. These muscles are essentially brake muscles. We have found that it makes good sense to primarily stretch the accelerators since they already do most of the action and strengthen the brake muscles since they work to stop the action. If we are bending side to side, one side of the trunk muscles bends us in the exact same muscles on the opposite side are responsible to stop the bending. What is most interesting to us is what happens in rotation. If we look at one side of the body at the trunk, there is an accelerator causing movement. And at the same time, there is a set of muscles that are doing their best to stop that movement. Interestingly enough, these muscles are acting as the brakes to rotation and are our true core muscles. The rotational accelerator muscle in the trunk, the outer oblique, tends to be short and dominant in rotational movement, while the opposite core muscles tend to be weak and long. This is the fundamental cause for most lower back injuries. The core muscles are usually not strong enough to stop the action of rotation if it's, if it's fast and powerful. If we add bending over and rotating together, then we have a special problem. This would lengthen and weaken the core muscles even more and would put them in a position that it just invites injury. Already, if they are weak, they're constantly in a strained position, lending to stiffness and pain. Many lower back injuries occur when people are bending over and twisting. If they are picking up something that is heavy, the problem has a high potential and probability for injury. We've discussed some important basic problems. Now I'm going to give you the best basic solution. To strengthen the core muscles in the most intelligent way, we have to consider just a couple of points. The trunk and pelvis need to be in the proper position. The core muscles need to be in a position where they have to work hard on one side to stop movement, which is their design action. We have designed an exercise on Rotex specifically to strengthen only the core muscles of the trunk. There are hundreds of other exercises to strengthen the accelerators and even exercises to strengthen the accelerator and core muscles at the same time. But since the accelerators are already the dominant muscles, both of these actions together will create the problem 
that the core muscles, the brakes, will be getting weaker than their opposite accelerators in either process. You will be able to strengthen just the core muscles, the brake muscles, while the accelerators are relaxed, and that's a very, very key point. This is a very specific but extremely beneficial exercise which immediately reduces many types of back and hip pain and eventually alleviates them altogether. As a clinician and sports consultant, I require all my patients and athletes to have access to a Rotex. I have found it to be the best exercise or exercise device that is the most time and cost effective, which will help the people with whom I work to both maintain the work we do together and also create their own gains. My idea as a clinician is to empower my clients to have every advantage available to them so they come to me only for maintenance care or performance strategies. And the Rotex allows us to accomplish that goal very well.